Hello everyone, it is Doc Hitchcock back again with another puzzle solve. And today we are going to be solving the Excalibur puzzle by Philip Black. This is another one of those puzzles that I was on the fence about buying, but only for a split second because uh, this just became available. This is his latest puzzle. Uh, again, it comes with a whopping price tag of 1200 some dollars, US dollars, um, but Given how much I loved the blackjack, I think I'm going to like this one as well. And just by looking at it, it gives me old school uh, Legend of Zelda vibes where you see the map and the water and the, the doors and you know that there's secrets to be had. And again, it's an adventure puzzle similar to Zelda. It's in the uh, realm of Excalibur, uh, Camelot, King Arthur, Merlin the Wizard. So uh, if you like any of those fantasy elements and you're a puzzle solver, you're gonna love this. Again, I make these videos because my dad loves to watch them. So, hey dad, and let's get into it. So here is the Excalibur puzzle box. Uh, let's go ahead and start by reading the instructions as provided by Philip. And he says here, the Excalibur puzzle box. The goal is to find and free the knight. Enable him to draw Excalibur from Dozemary Pool. Help him to escape the kingdom. Your reward awaits his escape. Uh, so let's go ahead and begin. And the first thing I want to do is just kind of explore uh, the puzzle. And one of the things that is pretty cool that you really probably won't be able to uh, appreciate as much is that if you look at the right here, the title of the puzzle box Excalibur is underneath this plastic resin which is supposed to symbolize the water. And as you move it, you can see like uh, kind of a shifting of the uh, the words. It's, it's a really nice effect. I'm not sure if there's any uh, significance to what it shifts to. Anyway, there's a nice door here. And if you actually look really close, I'm not sure if you can see it in this light, but you can see that there is what appears to be a man inside the door. Uh, looks like a Lego man of sorts. You have a little crown here, a little silver knob, uh, and the crown kind of doesn't turn necessarily, but it moves. Um, the knob, actually, I already played with it, and we know that the knob comes out if you turn it counterclockwise. So we'll go ahead and uh, hold on to that for now. Uh, there's a little door here with a, uh, a keyhole of some sort. A lot of these maze-like uh, en engrave, not engravings, but uh, uh, tracks, I guess you would call them. And there seems to be a lot of mechanisms built in here. If you turn it over, uh, very similarly, there's a little button here of sorts, another place where a key is required to turn something, a lot of other tracks and such. Then on each side, there's these little holes, uh, like almost, I guess you can call them caves, because this is kind of representative, I, I'm assuming, of like a map with a stream through the middle. So we kind of have like a little uh, map throughout the whole puzzle and then the other side as well. And then if you look at the top and bottom, uh, again, there's some some uh, doors and keyholes and such. And I'll try to make sure those are all in as much focus as possible. And then another cave of sorts here. I'm not sure if you can see down into there. Uh, let's see if I can get some more light. Hold on. Anyway, uh, all right, so let's start by, uh, if we, oh, and one other feature here. So you have this little turning dial so that you can kind of turn the puzzle or turn this little here and I'm assuming it's to make these tracks whenever we get those in motion to change them up a bit. So uh, let us begin by oh also looking through these little uh, divots here which are pretty much obviously these little cards to take out. Um, I'll go ahead and put that aside as well. Uh, here's one as well. Okay, so I think I found all the cards. And then as I was like doing it, I heard something rattling. So I was turning this to see if there's anything that that would do. And this little uh, wheel with numbers fell out. So I'll put that right there. And interestingly, now that I'm looking at it, um, so there's a little indentation there and a little indentation here. So I'm assuming that these go together. So this is probably some sort of combination uh, lock of sorts. And 
and right here we can see that uh, the same shape here. So if you look right there, there's like a little uh, triangle shape and you can see there's a triangle shape there. So I'm assuming it all kind of fits together. And yep, see, so how that sits down into there and then we'll find that little triangle shape and sit that down into there. Well, maybe not. Well, it seemed like a good idea at the time. Let's see if maybe I just didn't line it up right. There we go. So yeah, oh, and I can feel it. You can feel kind of resistance uh, one way versus the other. So pretty sure this is a combination lock of sorts. Likely to unlock this door, there is a little man in there. So let's see if we can use this combination lock to free him. If I, can. I did not see any other clues that I would think would be a combination, but then I did, oops, when I came across this piece here, that looks pretty um, literal when it comes to a combination. So turning clockwise five times, which is standard for a combo lock where you reset the lock, like if you were at a locker in high school. Then number one is counterclockwise four times. Number two is clockwise three times. Number three is counterclockwise two times and then clockwise to open. So uh, it probably <laughs> would be too easy for it to be a literal like combination, meaning one, two, three. So, but we're gonna try anyway, just because <laughs> you never know. Some... Okay, nothing is happening, so not surprised. <laughs> not surprised, that was trying a little bit uh, of a uh, long shot. So, all right, so now we need to figure what would be number one, what would be numeral number one, because I'm assuming this means it's a three digit combination. Now we have this here, so let's put this here for now, but we have this here, um, and it looks like a little puzzle actually. All right, so this makes sense. So it's six through 11, zero through five, and each number corresponds to two letters. And then we have three holes missing. So does that mean that it's five, eight, and nine or one permutation of that because those are the ones that are missing? Or is there somewhere on the puzzle? Oh wait, there was a, oh yep, there it is. I saw that when I pulled it out. So there's three letters there. So, oh, and it's, I assume maybe it's just, yep. So there it is. Okay, let's see if I can put this underneath. Okay, so that fits pretty nicely. So we have basically all the letters here. Uh, so I guess there really wasn't any clue. Let me look back at the uh, instruction here. So I don't see any clue on here. There's nothing on the back. So I don't see any reason to believe that it's something on here. But the clue is probably what the puzzle is about, which is Excalibur. So it's probably something about lore surrounding uh, King Arthur, Merlin, which Arthur and Merlin are both, well, if it's three digits and it's two times three, because it's two letters per digit, that's six. So Merlin and Arthur, let's start with those. Okay, well, there's no M, but there is an AR, a TH, and a UR. So <laughs> right off the bat, we find Arthur. I don't see how Merlin would be one. Let's just again go with Occam's razor. We know that Arthur is one, which is nine. Or, yeah, nine, three, and then seven. Arthur. I don't want to break anything. Oh, there's the button bot back here. So I'm assuming we press that. And it pops out Arthur, maybe. Fingers a little too big. All right, so here we go. 
Ow. All right, so here is Arthur, and we'll pull him out for now. And I, interestingly, it goes along these tracks, so I guess that's how we start our little journey. You can see that he follows the track. And that button actually looks like it's a little cylinder that comes out. Um, and so that cylinder is probably going to be a key of some sort. Um, not sure where yet. I did see something on here. So, oh, here we go. So right here, you can see there is a keyhole. So this round with a little uh, square, uh, oh, actually as I'm doing this, can you hear that? There's actually a magnet in here somewhere because when I put it there, oh, so I put it into that little hole. Okay, looks like a key sticking out now. That's not magnetic, so this is just printed. This isn't metal. Is this magnetic? All right, so there's a magnet in here. And it's doing something there. Okay, came out from here like this, so maybe the, here we go. So if you put it in like that, maybe now it can be used like, uh, cause there's a magnet in there, so the magnet, yep, there we go. I was right. Okay, so this little key, I'll set it aside for now, but maybe it'll use the magnet somewhere else, but this little key just moved this uh, bar here. So now that Arthur can actually leave his little home and we can actually start on our journey so there's only one way to go so we now go to this side where we have the ability to go one of two different ways so if we go this way it ends our journey so i'm assuming we don't go there um so i'm assuming we go this way, which takes us into this really dark uh, cave. So I'm assuming I just go ahead and push him in and he's gone. <laughs> and did he come out? We're Okay, so he, he's gonna come out this side. There he is, okay, so he comes out this side and he takes a little journey. All right, to our next inflection point. Uh, where we can go either this way or we can go this way. So if we go this way, we hit the water. Oops, I'm out of the picture. So if we go this way, we hit the water, which we can try, see if it does anything. Oh, it won't let me go there. So there's like a little, I can't know if you can see, but there's like a little, uh, it looks like a switch where Somehow I, and an arrow's pointing this way, so that must mean that you can only go that direction. So I guess that tells us we gotta go this way. All right, oh, well, this one also has arrows pointing in that direction. I'm not sure what that means, cause it's really only, there's really no other way to go. So I guess we'll just, Oh, you can't, because again, there's a switch there that says you can't go that direction. So, I wonder if the key also goes in here. Nope. How about this side? Nope. Uh, so, we said we can't go this, oh, that's the cave. Okay, so if we go this way, we get stuck there. Okay. Hmm. So what are we missing? I closed the door just to get it out of the way, but I'm wondering, so that opens this. So should I open that again? Is there something with this? There's a little trap door down here. So is that something that has to do with this little lock. So let's do that once again. <clears throat> okay, so I think I figured something out. So I brought uh, 
Arthur back through the cave of wonders or whatever that cave is. And I'm gonna bring him back to the beginning here because I think that um, when I look here, you can see that when we open this path here from the door to clear it for him, I think if we close that path again, we can actually transfer Arthur from this track to that track. Because obviously this track doesn't allow him to go any further, so maybe going to that track will. So let me go ahead and put him there. And then I have my key again. Oh, I think I'm putting it in wrong. Uh, nope, that was right, All right? So let's see if we close it. Oops, it's not in there. And boom, boom, I was correct. All right, so now we got a little progress here and let's, we can either go south or north. So let's just go ahead and go north. Um, okay, and so getting on here, looks like um, we can definitely swap this around. I'm not sure if that helps us any. Oh yeah, so we could, no, it just basically is the same. So basically we'll just uh, keep him going north here where we can go one of two ways. Oh, his head's turned around. So we can either go to the crown here that slightly moves. Um, and we can see here there's a button underneath this little square patch, which I'm assuming given his little boat is where he would sit down. You can push that button down. And then there's also over here where it looks like there's a little switch there as well. So let's go ahead and switch that if we can. It doesn't seem to do anything. No, nope. so if I push hard maybe, oh, there we go. So you gotta put a little effort into it. Um, so you push a little hard and you can see the switch is now uh, switched. <laughs> it's it's uh, activated. And so we go over here and let's, uh, he wants to watch the uh, water. And so push him down. It doesn't really do anything. Um, maybe if I push him down, the water comes out. Oh, it moves. This is moving a little more. That's for sure. I think that might have had something to do with it. Maybe the crown. Oh, yeah, the crown moves now. So maybe turn it upside down. Oh, this whole thing moves, not just the crown, the whole thing. Oh, I wonder if this comes out. Actually, it looks like it does screw out a little bit. Let's see if maybe, okay, so maybe turn it a little more. So this whole thing moves now. Oh, look at that. Oh, the whole thing came out. Look at that. So we have a little crown now. I'm not sure what that means. There's a little switch there. Oh, that's from this button. That button allows it to turn. So if we look down into there, there's actually a little switch. So right now we've already freed the knight. Let's see, the next one is enable him to draw Excalibur from Doe's Murray Pool. So we push this little switch here and this got a little more, uh, oh, so that just came out. Okay, so I'm hoping that was supposed to happen. So looks like the water comes up. Ah, oh, there you go. We got the water out and there's your Excalibur that, I'm not sure if it's supposed to be some other word when you switch it like that, but anyway, it's pretty cool. Anyway, we'll set that aside for now just in case there's other use for it. And oh, and there we go. We got our Philip Black, one out of 99. I got the very first puzzle. I'm not sure what that means, but Kind of cool, right? All right, and then we have this little uh, pyramid. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure what that is. Is that the boat we were talking about? Oh, and look at that. That must be Excalibur. We have to get uh, him here. So maybe we have to get that boat somehow to get him on the boat so that he can go get Excalibur. That's pretty cool. It's a nice little adventure we're having. <laughs> so I guess we have to now go back a little bit and go this direction. So another word, another uh, place here that has a button underneath of it. So we'll have him sit down. Ah, cool. So it releases this little door here. 
uh, and out popped. Ah, so let me turn it upside down because there's actually more in there. So this little square peg pops out, but it looks like there's more in there. Ah, oh, it's a whole drawer full of tools. That is sick. All right, go Arthur. And let's see what we have. Oh, look at that. A little insignia ring. <laughs> That's pretty cool. I wonder if I'm supposed to, I'm gonna get it stuck. I'm gonna put it on my pinky. I don't know if that comes into play. Oh, actually, now that I look at it, ah. So I wasn't supposed to get this out. I was actually supposed to use this insignia ring as a uh, key to unwind that. Ah, okay. So that was not supposed to be done with my fingers. This ring was actually supposed to allow that to happen. That would have been so much cooler. We might have to go back and do that because that actually is really cool. All right, and then let's see what else we got here. So I'm gonna set this over here. Similar to um, Blackjack, we have a little tool here that looks like a crank probably. So if I put it together similar to how we put the Blackjack crank together, actually it's exactly like the Blackjack crank. So I know exactly what to do with this. And then this goes into here as a little key. And actually, interestingly, one of the flaws that I would have pointed out, which I didn't in my review video, but I do retrospectively, is that uh, you found this little tool in uh, the blackjack puzzle separately. And so you tried, just like I tried to unscrew this without the ring, I tried to open the little uh, blackjack box uh, crank using my fingers in this, uh, rather than the tool, which we find later. So, and also this was a little longer, so it al allowed us to do that. This though, um, makes it to where you have to use this tool because it's shorter and then also the tool comes right with it. Interestingly, this little square looking tool reminds me of the other side there where we had this little hole that had the square at the bottom, the square keyhole. And that would make a lot of sense because this came with the tool. So this would tell us, oh, we need to go unscrew that with the insignia, which is, I, I just can't get over how cool that is because it, it goes really right along with the kingly type of, um, you know, uh, theme. And so I'm gonna put that on my finger as if I'm Arthur the King. And we will go ahead and we'll stick this down into, see if it fits down in there. And it does like a glove. Now I am thinking, given where that is and where this is, that maybe the crank is going to push the boat out of the water so that he can get on. So let's see if I'm right. Okay, that's where it stops. So I'm not gonna force it. Take that out, turn it over. Look at that. This is the boat house, and then the boat is actually inside the boat house. Okay, so did I raise it up all the way? Because the boat does not seem to want to come out. Okay, so there's a little blue piece right there that's keeping him from um, getting on the boat. So I think we need to get rid of that blue piece somehow. And I am not sure how to do that. Oh, I think... Uh, okay, so there's a little uh, button right there. So I think when the boat comes out, it needs to push that button down. Ah, there we go. So you need to push the boat down. When you push the boat down, it pushes the button down, which allows it to go in place and it allows uh, him to bypass that. And now he's on the boat. And so now he can move forward. It's gonna push it down a little bit. All right, and, and per the instructions, it now says, uh, let's see, it says, uh, the knight cannot swim. His armor will sink him to the bottom. Do not let him jump out of the boat. So I think that means because as you move forward, he could probably come out the side here because there's really nothing locking him in there. Um, so just don't let him fall out. I, uh, I guess that's their way of saying that would be cheating. All right, so we need to get him where? We need to get him over here. Uh, looks like right here. Uh, is where he parks his boat to get the, the sword out of the pool. So we need to go all the way around. Uh, so that's pretty simple. We just have to follow one of these two tracks. And I think it's, I just followed the wrong track. <laughs> so we need to go back a little, go this way. Um, okay, up there. All right, and then we are there at here.
Once again, Philip Black gets me uh, swearing like a sailor when uh, his little mechanism flings Excalibur at my face. <laughs> but look at that. Isn't that pretty cool? This little sword. It's got pretty good detail to it, too. I mean, the hilt. You got little details on the hilt. Uh, it's different colors and everything. Uh, pretty cool. Okay. Well, I'm going to set that aside because I'm not sure exactly what to do with Excalibur, but we've gotten him uh, from the pool. So, and now we need to help him to escape the kingdom. Okay. And I'm not sure what exactly that means to escape the kingdom other than... I don't know what that means. <laughs> so um, maybe it's good to get back here. Can we get out of the water? Ah, here we go. So back here where we originally were, where we couldn't do anything because um, it was uh, the arrows were facing that way. I think we now need to uh, do some of this stuff over here. So I need to get back on this track here. So we need to turn the boat around. We need to go backwards to the other side and choose this. Oh, oh no, he fell out of the boat. Don't tell Philip Black. <laughs> I did, he fell out of the boat. He did not sink to the bottom. I am going to believe that that never happened. So he's going to go. Oh, he did it again. <laughs> Everybody, don't tell Philip. All right, so he's gone across. Okay, so now he is... Uh, he's backwards in the boat now, but question is, how do we, okay, so there's buttons down there just like before. Oops, sorry about that. So we need to press down and get him off the boat onto land. Okay, but the big question is, <clears throat> um, I don't know how to turn that. I'm assuming... Maybe we're not there yet. So maybe we gotta get back on the boat, go to this one and get off here. Okay, shitty though. Oh, forget, again, with the potty mouth. Thanks, Philip, you turned me into a sailor. Once I went over this little hump, I didn't think about it before I did it. Now I can't go backwards. So I kinda gotta go through the whole rigmarole again in order to get him back on that boat. So let's see if I go this way. Well, the good news is that by doing that on this particular path, I now have one of these sit down buttons that I can push. Don't know what that does. Oh, wait a second. Excalibur fits into there. I think Excalibur is a key. Yep, and there's a little spring in there. So this is actually a keyhole. So if I go sit down, put Excalibur in, push down. Oh no. Okay, I thought maybe I could. Oh, there we go. And I can turn this. Don't know what that did. That's it. The real question is, what did that do? So, is that like part one of this one here? Oh, it turned that right there. Okay, so we just opened up, by turning that, we opened up this path here. So now we gotta get back here. So here, get off the boat. So push down to open up the path, get out. Okay, let's turn around. Now, I guess the question is, oh, he's escaped. Right through there, he's escaped, he's gone, and that is it. That's, that was quite the adventure. So let's put it back together, and then we'll go through the pros and cons and review the piece.
All right, and there you have it. That is the finished Excalibur puzzle box by Philip Black. Let's take a look at our pros and cons. So everyone, there you go. That is the Excalibur puzzle box by Philip Black. And just like we thought, it was indeed quite an adventure in more ways than one. It brought back all of the nostalgic vibes from my childhood, uh, things like The Legend of Zelda, uh, Merlin and the Knights of the Round Table, uh, the Lego man involved, brought my Le the Lego vibes in there, and then all of the pleasure of solving a really intricate, well-made puzzle. I will say it was pretty obvious that Philip learned a lot from his past puzzles because there were some elements such as the crank where it seemed like uh, he kind of went the extra mile to solve some of the issues we saw in the last puzzle. Um, however, I will say, I kind of feel like Philip has set himself up a little bit with a hefty price tag because uh, the quality of the puzzle is superb. Love it. I don't want anything different than what he's giving us. However, he really can't go down in price because if he goes down in price, he's gonna have to go down in quality as well. And you really can't, he's, he's set the bar high for himself. Uh, but the price tag is making it to where these puzzles, as great as they are, are gonna be unobtainable for most people. So I really, really hope there's some way that he can come to a way to make it a little more affordable, but keep all of the great nostalgia and, and, and puzzle solving goodness of what he's producing, because this is a home run for me. Um, now, of course, as an adult, I would say, uh, you know, I'd love to change it up. Like last time it was about gambling with blackjack and you got a casino chip at the end and you got some cards. With this, it's all about adventure and, and for me, nostalgia. So I love how he's mixing it up, brilliant. I hope he does make more. I hope he continues to, to wow us with uh, the, the new ideas, but I do hope somehow, I don't know how, but somehow he comes to a better place with the costing or the pricing because I really want people to enjoy these puzzles. These are great puzzles. So we'll see what happens. If you can afford one, get one. If you can't, see if you can borrow one. And if none of those apply to you, then I hope that you enjoyed this video and was able to experience some of this through my eyes. Anyway, hope to see you on the next Puzzle Solve and goodbye for now.